Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Best of British Blackwell. Today I'm going to be making something quite special and something that I have never seen anybody else cook on uh, their YouTube channel or on their cooking channel. I am going to be making fillet steak burnt ends. Now uh, a couple of weeks ago I travelled up to my uh, local Costco shop and they had a lovely great big whole beef fillet joint. Uh, and when I got it home and I unpacked it um, I was able to kind of dissect it up into nice big solid pieces for steaks and for beef wellingtons and the two pieces at either end were kind of a little bit in between being too small to be steaks or anything else so what I did is I chopped those up I've been marinating them for the last couple of days and I'm going to turn, that, turn those into burnt ends. Um, I'm also going to be making a couple of side dishes to go with it as well of some sous vide mashed potato and some lovely sous vide carrots. So let me talk you through some of the ingredients that you're going to need to make this dish. Let's go through the sub ingredients first or the sides if you like. You're going to need some milk. I've got about 400 mils of milk there. Yeah, this is for the potatoes. You're going to need some garlic. You can use fresh garlic, crushed garlic, lazy garlic, whatever. It doesn't really matter. The star secret ingredient of these potatoes are dairy lee or cream cheese triangles or you can just use any type of cream cheese that you like really. You're going to need some butter. You're also going to need some lovely potatoes which are decent for mashing. These are Chopin potatoes which I bought from Marx's but you can pro probably get hold of anything really. So for the carrots, uh, I have just picked up some very basic carrot battens here. Uh, these look like they've been pre-peeled and kind of diced. It doesn't really matter, you can use any type of carrot. Uh, but these are going to be cooked in some uh, balsamic vinegar and some star anise. So they're a variation of something called Vichy carrots. And then finally I've just got a little selection of veg here because we're going to need some veg to go with this dish. Now the star of the dish are these bad boys here. Now I'm going to get my hand in here to show you, they are clean, but these are trimmed up pieces of beef fillet. So there's not a great deal of fat on here, there's not a great deal of sinew, you're just talking about pure beefy goodness in there. Now these have been marinating in a, in a mixture of this glazed and confused barbecue sauce and some of this Jack and Cola Angus and Oink rub. I've had those in there for a couple of days now and it's starting to smell absolutely superb. So the next stage for these and to get these ready for what we're going to do is we're going to uh, drain these off of the uh, drain the juice off of these we're going to give them another quick rub in some uh, some of the Jack and Cola Angus and Oink and we're going to vacuum pack pretty much all of this every dish that you see on here at the moment apart from the greens they're going to go into our sous vide today uh, for at least a couple of hours so let's get that process underway. Now this potato dish is very very simple all I've done with these potatoes is peel them I've got myself a vacuum pack bag which is big enough to fit these potatoes and it's literally just about adding the potatoes into the bag. Uh, there's six potatoes here, I mean obviously just, just make enough potatoes um, uh, for your uh, requirements. So we'll load these in and then it's about getting our other ingredients in there. Uh, the key piece of advice to you when making these style potatoes is act really quickly. Peel the potatoes, chop them and get them vacuum packed as quickly as you can. Because these are going to be cooking in sous vide, they're going to be retaining all of their starch. And that's what you want. That's what makes these potatoes extra special. They're very, very starchy. They're very filling. They're very tasty. If you had boiled them in water, you lose a lot of that. So we're not going to lose that starch. But that starch is what makes these potatoes start to turn a little bit brown if you leave them out for too long. So next into the bag is going to be three quarters of a teaspoon of garlic. We're also going to add our dairy lee cheese or our cream cheese whatever and then our butter now that looks like a lot of butter and it is but this is a special dish today so don't worry about using too much butter there are a lot of potatoes in there and these potatoes keep really really well so you know you don't have to eat them all on the same day finally and something which i forgot to add to my ingredient board here is the angus and wink uh, rub me garlic butter I'll put in the description box below where you can buy this stuff, but this is absolutely fantastic. Beware though, you don't need any salt and pepper with this. This contains quite a lot of salt, so you won't want to salt these potatoes additionally. That does the job for you. So a little dash of that in there, I'd say about a tablespoonful. And then finally, we go in with our milk. And our milk provides the moisture in this dish. Final thing to do with this is get it sealed up 
and when we've got all our veggies ready I will tell you what the next step will be. Now on to our carrots and basically we're going to prepare these and cook these in almost the same way as the potatoes. They go into a vacuum sealed bag with a couple of key ingredients and the key ingredients here are the uh, balsamic uh, uh, vinegar uh, which you know use the best that you possibly can and we're going to put one large piece of one whole piece of star anise in here If you haven't tried star anise before it's that lovely kind of aniseed um, flavor uh, But using one star is you know not going to overpower these carrots too much What we're trying to do is create a little bit of a contrast between the sharp vinegar um, uh, The aniseed in the star anise and we're also going to add let me get some of my balsamic in here there we go, we're going to do about two tablespoons of balsamic vinegar in there and then the last thing that we're going to add, just for a little bit of sweetness, now you could do this with brown sugar, you could do it with honey, um, I'm going to be using just a little bit of maple syrup in here just to add to the sweetness and uh, just cut back a little bit on the, uh, uh, the aniseed flavour of the star anise, they should work well together, they're quite, quite nice flavours. So. They're all in there now, let's get these sealed up and then we'll move on to the steak. So for the steak it's very simple really, we're just going to add to the flavours of the marinade that we've used already by just adding a little bit more of this Angus and Oink Jack and Cola rub. Not too much, you don't need too, too much of this. And then we're also going to add a little bit more of the glazed and confused barbecue sauce. That just is going to stop this meat from drying out when it's in the sous vide. Not that you get dried out meat from, from the sous vide, it's very rare that that happens. But um, with this being fillet, you don't really want to take any chances of the meat turning out uh, to, be, to be dry. Now what we're going to do is transfer this in to our vacuum pack bag. We're not messing around with this meat too much, just get it straight in. All of the juices should follow in. Now we're going to seal this up and get this vacuumed again. So here we have it, they're all prepped ready to go. We've got our carrots, we've got our potatoes and we've got our fillet steak. The greatest thing about this dish is that these are all going to cook on the same at the same temperature in our water bath, uh, just at 30 minute intervals. So the, carrot, the, sorry, the potatoes will go on at 180 for two hours. The fillet steak will go in for an hour and a half uh, on 180 and the carrots only need an hour. So you just set yourself 30 minute reminders once the potatoes go in, you know you're two hours away. Once the, while the potatoes are finishing and the fillet steak is out, we're gonna move on to our next stage, which I hope to be able to finish off on the Kamado outside if the weather allows us. But if not, these will go into a pan. Um, the carrots will also need finishing off in a pan just to give them a little bit of color. But the next stage for these is to set our one over uh, the sous vide machine to 180 degrees Fahrenheit and get those into the water. Okay, so I'm delighted to say that the weather has improved significantly enough for us to be able to cook outside today, which is, which was always the ultimate goal uh, to get the Kamado up and running because it's the best way to cook these fillet steak bites off. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how I'm going to set the Kamado up. Um, I'm going to light it first of all. And I'm going to just crack straight on with setting up uh, the grill and the deflector plates because the grill is not as hot as it would be if I was trying to do this when it was well lit. So I'm going to be using one deflector plate, I'm going to be using some uh, offset heat, I'm going to be using direct and indirect heat. Doesn't really matter that I've got the divide and conquer around the wrong way. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be cooking the, some of the burnt ends over here direct, then I'll be moving them over to indirect, and then I've also got a cast iron skillet to finish the uh, carrots off. They're all in the sous vide at the moment. We'll let this come up to temperature, then we'll be ready to cook. Just while we're waiting for the Kamado Joe to come up to temperature, I thought that we could do a little bit of a giveaway in this video. So my friends at barbecues to you.co.uk, uh, whose details I will be putting up in the corner uh, for you, they've provided us with some Kamado Joe merchandise. So uh, I've got a t-shirt, which I'm gonna give away. An official Kamado Joe t-shirt. All you need to do to win it, or to be in with a chance of winning it, is to like this video and post a comment down below and I'll pick at random uh, a winner, best comment, something like that, and I'll send you a free prize. So let's, uh, good luck, let's crack on with the cook. 
Okay, so we're at the stage where what's happened here is that over the course of two hours, the potatoes have been in for two hours, the fillet steak has been in for an hour and a half, and the carrots have been in for an hour. Now I've taken the carrots and the fillet steak out, and I've turned the ANOVA down to 120 just to keep the potatoes nice and hot. And that's going to allow us to open these um, uh, carrots and fillet steak up, take them over to the Kamado, which I've already lit, and get those cooking away while we just wait for our, um, our potatoes just to stay nice and warm. So the next thing I'm going to show you is how we're going to finish off these um, uh, pieces of fillet steak and uh, carrots on the Kamado Joe. Then I'm going to show you how we prepare this mash, which is keeping nice and warm for us. And then we're going to be plating up. Okay, so we've timed the cooking of this to absolute perfection. Our potatoes are still in the sous vide. They are resting at around about 120, but they're ready for us to mash any time we go. First thing I'm gonna do is get these carrots and put them in directly over uh, this heat. Uh, you, as you can see, I've got some butter in that pan and all I've done is I have literally poured the contents of the sous vide uh, vacuum pack straight in to that pan and just added that butter. Over here, let me just pan over for you. I have got our burnt ends and I've got some of our green veg, which um, I managed to mistime the cooking of those and I'm gonna just char them off on the barbecue. So if we pan back over here to have a look at our Kamado, you can see that's burning really hot. That's running at about 700 degrees at the moment, which is incredibly hot. And our butter is already melting on our carrots over here. Let me show you some of the other ingredients that I've got out here with me. I've bought out three different types of barbecue sauce. First one I've bought out is the Cosmos Q uh, OPX1 which is probably the best barbecue sauce that is available around at the moment. The second one is a relatively new one from Angus and Oink, which is Dirty Barbie, which is an espresso and bourbon barbecue sauce. And then the third one is a little bit of a favorite of uh, the family here, which is the Glazed and Confused. And I'm just gonna mix these up a little bit and make something delightful for these um, burnt ends to sit in. For the veg, uh, believe it or not, the Angus and Oink fries with that works wonderfully when you're charring vegetables on the barbecue. And just to make that um, uh, 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 rub stick, we're gonna be using a little bit of fry light here. So what I'm gonna do first of all is get this cast iron skillet set up indirectly on the heat. Let this come to temperature. I'm gonna close this down for no more than two or three minutes. You'll see if I focus in now, the temperature is rising up very, very quickly on this Kamado jar. It's gonna get up to about 700 degrees and we don't want it to go much higher than that. We're just gonna let those carrots get to the point where they glaze off in those pan, that pan. Bear in mind that the uh, steak bites over here that we've got, they're pretty much cooked anyway because they've been sous vide. Then we're gonna get those on, then we're gonna get the veg on, then we're gonna get everything plated up. Okay, so our carrots are starting to get up to temperature now. And what you'll find is, slowly but surely, the balsamic and the, the maple syrup and everything that we put in that sous vide pack will start to uh, burn away and caramelize away and we're gonna end up with a lovely color on those carrots. But the next stage for us is going to be to take these pieces of fillet and put them on the barbecue and let's just get some nice bits of color on here this Kamado is so hot at the moment that you know uh, I would recommend using a heat proof glove to do this it's incredibly hot you don't want to leave your hand over there too soon and in fact when you open up the lid to this Kamado it gets hotter because obviously it increases the uh, the air intake but these pieces of fillet here have been cooked for such a short period of time that it's really not going to make too much of a difference so i'm going to leave the lid open now 
to let it square out to a temperature where we've got direct heat on this side, indirect heat on the other side. And if I need to switch it over and I need to increase the heat on the veg and decrease the heat on the steak, I can do that because I've got my heat proof gloves over here. So what we're gonna do is just let these take on a little bit of color. Okay, so as you can probably see, what I've done is I've taken the cast iron skillet that the carrots are in, I've moved them over to direct heat. I want that heat to really start to thicken that sauce that the carrots are in and take on some of that glaze. So I've got my heat proof glove on here, which is absolutely superb. The temperature is really ramping up and it means that when everything I want over here that gets the temperature, I can just move it over to here and it's gonna be at least two, 300 degrees less than that. We're really not far away from completing this meal. So we've had our carrots uh, caramelizing away in the pan here. And look at these burnt ends here. This is exactly the type of thing that we're looking for. I mean, normally what would happen is you would have a brisket, or you'd have a sirloin, and you would create burnt ends using that. Bear in mind that we've put these in the sous vide, so we know that they're cooked to around about medium on the inside. Now we've got them over the top of the Kamado Joe. These are gonna be so tender, so nice. All we're looking to do is get that burnt end kind of um, uh, flavor onto them. I'm gonna give them a couple of minutes this side. Then after that, what I'm gonna do is get this veg on. What I've done with this veg here is I've coated it with a little bit of fry light. I've put some fries with that Angus and Oink seasoning on here. I'm gonna move these burnt ends over here into this pan and put some of those barbecue sauces in there. And I'm just gonna let these render down in that beautiful seasoning that we've got in that pan. Okay, so check this out. Five minutes in, these burnt ends, they're looking pretty good to me. We've got some lovely charred veg on there. I'm gonna leave these carrots on for another five minutes. Now we're gonna go and get these potatoes ready. Okay, so the point we're at now is that the burnt ends are now off of the grill uh, along with the veg and they're just resting a little bit. I've got a completely empty saucepan here as I hope you can see. I'm gonna turn the sous vide off now and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our mashed potato, which isn't actually mashed yet, out of the sous vide and I'm gonna put it onto a towel here and hopefully you can see that. That has just been kind of water bathing away on its own for the last couple of hours now. Doesn't need much more than that. Now what you could do if you wanted to is you could take this, you could lay it flat and mash it in this bag. Or if you didn't want to eat it straight away, you could leave it in the water bath to rest for a while, keep it up to temperature, and then you could mash it whenever you want it. What I'm gonna do, just to make sure that it's extra creamy, is I'm gonna take the contents, I'm gonna pour it into the pan. Let me tell you now, the smells, are, wow, this smells superb. The garlic, the butter, oh, the Angus Anoint garlic butter seasoning, and getting off of here is absolutely wonderful. All I'm gonna do now is take my potato masher. Now watch this, just watch how easily this carves through those potatoes. Wowee, they're just absolutely falling apart under the weight of this potato masher. I'm not putting any pressure on here at all and they're just falling apart. So I'm gonna to continue to mash these potatoes and we're gonna have these with our burnt ends and our veg and our carrots. Okay, so here we go, let's bring our plate over. And the very first thing that we've got to serve up onto this plate is some of these fillet steak burnt ends. Just take a little look at these. This is not the type of burnt ends that you'd be looking at at somewhere like Franklin's where you're talking about the brisket burnt ends. This is fillet steak, you know? This is the absolute daddy of the meat that is available to you. You're using some of the best barbecue sauces that you've got available. And here we just have a few charred greens on here. 
bit of tender stem broccoli and some French beans and then we're going to take some of our sous vide mashed potato take a look at that that's just luxurious isn't it and then the final thing that we're going to do is take some of our balsamic and maple syrup carrots which have just been sous vide again so that they're cooked and then just reduced down in some of that sauce that they're cooked in and then I think for me the final thing that we need to do it would be an absolute travesty if we didn't is take some of the barbecue sauce that the burnt ends have been in we just paste it over these burnt ends we get a little bit on our mashed potato I don't care how much mess I'm making here this is all about flavour and I think we just need to wade in here and see what this tastes like okay guys so you see me dish up let's now take a little taste of this plate is it a long dish to cook not really because what you're doing is you're putting all the ingredients into the sous vide and all you're really doing is charring it off on the Kamado or any barbecue that you would do later um, and the, you know all the flavor does actually come from the fact that you're charring it off on the barbecue later but you could just as easily do it indoors on the stove which I would have to have done if the weather had not improved a little bit um, let's uh, dive in and take a look and see what happens with this stuff so I'm going to first take a little bit, piece of this burnt end now take a little look at that so that is fillet steak you know uh, you can get burnt ends where they are bits of brisket bits of sirloin bits of whatever you like but at the end of the day as long as they've got a little bit of char around the outside and as long as they've got that barbecue sauce this stuff just melts in the middle fillet steak is not for everyone I am not the biggest fillet steak fan in the world however that meat because it's been sous vide and cooked through and only been on the barbecue for a couple of minutes that is sweet it's textured it's soft everything about it is absolutely superb here we go have a little look at that mash there that mash has been sous vide as well so all of the starch in the potatoes have stayed in there you haven't lost anything from those potatoes because they've been boiled wow let me tell you guys there's not anything to dislike about that it's so good so tasty and it's something I've never seen on YouTube before so hopefully you've enjoyed that you know uh, fillet steak in our family is a little bit of a treat because it's quite expensive but every now and then when you buy it you get these little um, trimmed ends that you can't think of anything to do with and well I've just found something so um, you know thank you for watching um, really appreciate you guys um, watching these videos and signing up to this it was absolutely superb don't forget if you want to win yourself a, um, a Kamado Joe official t-shirt uh, proudly sponsored by barbecues to you.co.uk uh, post the comment down below like the video we'll pick a winner at random but in the meantime, thank you for watching. Stay safe. See you again.